It is one of nature's rarest mammals. They are uh, nocturnal. They are usually active at night. And uh, they are known to use uh, barrels that are made by other animals. They are uniquely adapted to survive in the wild. It is a pangolin. It's a pangolin. Look at that, guys. Now this is a super, super rare animal. Even lions can't puncture their scales. Look at that, guys. That's ridiculous. So the lions are busy playing with the pangolin. But the human appetite for pangolin body armor is pushing them to extinction. The most critical factor which has resulted to uh, the demise of the pangolins is actually traffic poaching, poaching for the scales. The most important driver that threatens the existence of pangolin, whether they are the giant or tree pangolin, is habitat loss. Pangolins are um, um, scaly and eating uh, animals and uh, the name pangolin originated in Malaysia. It's a Malay name, which they call uh, panko queen. They normally feed on uh, ants. Uh, in Kenya, they occur within the Mara ecosystem. Uh, they also occur within the forested ecosystem, especially in Kakamega forest and other uh, savanna ecosystems of Savos, um, northern Kenya, like Kipia, Samburu, Kitui, uh, Mwingi. There are eight pangolin species in the world. Four species are found in Asia, China, Taiwan, uh, Vietnam, India, and so forth and so on. And then we have got another four in Africa. Now, Kenya, we have three of the four species found in Africa. This one is a tree pangolin. It lives on the tree, but it's easy to find it on the ground. The best place to find this animal and see it is either Loeta Forest or Kakamega in Kenya. These two specimens belong to the same species, only that this is prepared as a flat skin. This is our technique at the National Museums of Kenya. And this is what popularly called a uh, stuffed specimen, but they're the same species. This is called Teming ground pangolin. The species is found in savanna woodland, wet or semi-dry, but not completely dry, eating a lot of uh, termites and uh, ants. This is the ground, giant ground pangolin, which we are fearing is extinct in the country. It's found in West Africa, Central Africa, and uh, it's a delicacy in most West African countries. People collect it to eat it locally, and some people also use it for some cultural reasons. Pangolins are considered to be the world's most trafficked mammals. Here, a shipment of pangolins destined for the Vietnamese market was intercepted by conservationists from Save Vietnam's wildlife. And incredibly, these pangolins were rescued alive. But unfortunately, that doesn't usually happen. In 2014, the International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN placed all eight species of pangolins on the red list of the world's most threatened animals. IUCN researchers estimate that in the last 10 years, poachers have killed and illegally trafficked over a million pangolins. But that's not the only threat pangolins are facing. As population of humans increase, there is need for more land, for settlement, for farms, and the like. And also livestock has also increased in most of these rangelands. And because of that, 
the habitat of fangolins have declined. Uh, the most um, the most critical factor which has resulted to uh, the demise of the pangolins is actually traffic poaching, poaching for the scales. Although we, we, we have not known what extent, but from the data which is there, you can see it's a serious problem because many people have been caught with pangolin scales within the ports of entry and exit. The last site is meeting in South Africa we wrote a proposal to upgrade African pangolins from Appendix 2, which is a weak protection, to Appendix 1, which is a more strict protection. And uh, we were successful. The four pangolin species in Africa were moved to Appendix 1. So if you are moving a pangolin scale, skin, meat, or a whole pangolin, for any purpose, even for just an exhibition and bringing back across the border to any country, whether it's Uganda or far off, in China or far off in Europe, then you need two certificates, meaning that you cannot do it undercover. It has to be open. And uh, the reason has to be uncovered to be true. And the animal, if it's going to come back, has to come back because the international eye is on it. At the 65th meeting of the CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, members raised the alarm that there was a dangerous increase in the smuggling of pangolin products being trafficked from Africa to Asia, fueled by the demand in China, Vietnam, Thailand, and Malaysia. Unfortunately, just like rhino horns, pangolin scales are made from keratin, so they are worth thousands of dollars a kilo. The scales are used in traditional Asian medicine, and pangolin meat is also considered a delicacy. Kenya is proving to be among the favorite routes for most of the traffickers. We have got um, many cases that are apparently from outside the country, and uh, Kenya is just a point of transit. But um, quite a good number, probably on a 50-50 basis, there are pangolins that have been seized, and when we are examining them, we recognize that they are from the country, even from the records that the investigation office has bring. In July, we had two suitcases, medium-sized suitcases, full of pangolin scales that were apparently from the country. And uh, this person had accumulated them. When we examined them, they were separate. They were different individual animals, animals from where they harvested the scales. And different times, you could see the age of where of, on, on the scales. And this is somebody who knew what he was doing and has been accumulating the, the the scales into the suitcases probably to acquire a certain uh, magnitude for sale in and they were being shipped to the Thailand that's why they just to Thailand there's also another one in October this was uh, bags also full of scales that were arrested at um, Jumbo Kenyatta they were heading to China and uh, these ones were also domestic collection of pangolin there are quite a good number of cases which we've recorded and we don't discuss them because these are um, under, the, under, under, under the judiciary. You know, we have most of the West African countries and even mostly Central and West Africa. Some of the countries are landlocked. They do not have a port, so they export through Kenya. A good example is Uganda, um, DRC and the like. So if anybody is interested in exporting their pangolins, the illegal pangolins, then they will do it through uh, Kenya because we have the port. The other thing is uh, JKIA is actually a connecting hub for many airlines in, uh, in, in Africa. So you'll get somebody from West Africa connecting to Europe, to South Africa, here in Nairobi. The Kenyan authorities had to respond quickly to stamp out this trade. Otherwise, there's little hope of saving these dwindling species. Inside the protected areas, it's not a big threat because we already have security operations or security teams within the protected areas. So there we are very sure we are protecting them properly by providing security. But outside, that is where it is tricky because they are there within the communities, but we are educating the communities and where uh, we have many like in northern Kenya, the areas of Gurumani, the Masai Maras, 
we have developed conservancies to ensure that the pangolins are protected. In the conservancies, they, are, they have security teams moving around to check whether any of the wildlife, including pangolins, are being persecuted. Coming up, a search for the elusive pangolin in the wild. Pangolins may be the world's hardest mammals to spot in Kenya. In some communities, it is considered a bad omen to cross one. But there are Kenyan scientists who are searching for the rarest of animals. We set off to Kitui County, one of the areas in Kenya where pangolins are known to live. Near New Market in eastern Kenya, we sought the help of local residents to help us find and understand how pangolins lived. They volunteered to show us the barrows where they suspected the pangolins hid. Ni mnyama ambao hataki kuona watu na tuseme kuna watu ambao wameishi mpaka mtu anaishi anazeeka na hajamuona na wanapitana na hivyo sababu anatembea usiku na watu nao wanatembea mchana. Na unaona huko kuna mizito kupa sana. Sasa ndio hao wanyama ambao wanaitwa pango ndio wanaishi sana na tumekuja kuwatafuta tafuta mahali wanaishi ndio tuwaone na mahali sasa tumefika nafikiri tumekaribia mahali ambao wameweka manyumba yao ile majimu hii ndio simu yake hii na kuna nyingine iko pale na nyingine iko pale hivi tuseme hii bomba yao karibu yote ni yake hakuna kitu kingine wewe inaingia hapa After several hours of waiting in the dark and with no pangolin in sight, the villagers abandoned the stakeout. No pangolins appeared. Maybe all the commotion had scared them off and they had decided to stay safe deeply inside the burrows. On the next visit, we sought the help of a Kenya wildlife research scientist, Daniel Muteti, who volunteered to help us capture the elusive pangolins on film by using a camera trap. These animals uh, have uh, specific characteristics. Number one, they are usually active at night, and uh, they are known to use uh, barrels made by other animals, like either warthogs, or um, adivacs and these uh, barrels are usually maintained over time and uh, they, they're usually large inside. We managed to do the setup uh, last evening and uh, we, when we got to the barrels we, we were able to sight two of them that looked active and uh, when we set the, uh, the, the, the cameras we were able to capture uh, not the animal we were looking for but we had managed to get some other, other species including birds and uh, rats and bats but not the, the specific species we are looking for. So today, you know, you, 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 we, we say uh, data, even if you don't get the, the, the specific species you are looking for, uh, any data you collect is, is usually very important. So we've already backed up the data, uh, cleaned the, set, uh, the, 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 the systems, and now we, we are resetting. But then, one uh, very surprising and very uh, interesting thing is that today, when we came during daytime, we, are, we realized that uh, the number of barrels we had recorded yesterday, they, they, were, they were more than twice the number. In fact, today we have seen five in the same, <laughs> within the same area. So meaning actually it would have been possible. Where we set the cameras yesterday, these animals might have existed or entered stewed inside the same barrels used, using the, the, the other entrances. On the second night, one local guide, Mr. Mulinge, said there was an active pangolin burrow several kilometers away. He helped Daniel Muteti set up another camera trap. And we all waited, but still, no pangolins. So we traveled over 200 kilometers to the Masai Mara Reserve, where pangolins had recently been spotted by a wildlife film crew. But the lions had seen them first. Jesus. It is, is it a pangolin? It looks like a pangolin. It is a pangolin. It's a pangolin. Look at that, guys. 
That's ridiculous. So the lions are busy playing with the pangolin. No, man. <laughs> what are the chances? That's crazy. Now, this is a super, super rare animal. And what are the chances of them playing with a pangolin? Can you hear the claws on its scales? What you'll find with these guys is they roll up into this defensive ball and they've got this long tail. So the tail is what's closest to us at the moment. It's very difficult to make out um, what's actually going on. But the tail is closest to us and it rolls round and protects their head and their head tucks in. And those hard scales um, will protect the soft underbelly where the legs and the face is so that they don't get hurt when things like lions come across them because they're not fast animals and this does happen. And you can see that armor plating. It almost looks like a pine cone. Um, that you can see here and basically that armor plating is like your fingernail, but in incredibly thick um, So if you had to go and kind of touch that it almost feels like armor and you can knock on it And it would be very very hard and that's why the lions actually leave it alone is because their mouths Just can't get a purchase on it. It's because of the hardness and especially tonight when it's wet This particular species is called a Temex ground pangolin um, They are are completely harmless to people but they are an incredibly special animal and very few people get the opportunity to see one of these things. It is even rarer to see the pangolins in the light of day and taking a stroll with its armor open and showing itself to the world. But there's a good reason for them to hide. You see, with the decline of ivory trade and the rhino horn, so people are replacing the ivory and the rhino horns with the pangolin scales, which are almost close to actually what is the rhino horn. Because these are just the scales which are made of keratin. And the rhino horn is also something, it's, an, it's, 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 uh, it's like a hair which has enhanced keratin. Despite the astronomical profits that pangolin scales can bring, there are good people on all continents trying to save this rare and harmless animal and return pangolins to the natural world where they belong. The, um, a lot of eyes of the elephant in the wild, rhinos in the wild, the illegal poachers would shift their tactics to what probably the agencies are not looking at very keenly. And I think this uh, could also be a contributing factor. The rising consumption of meat from pangolin and scales has, has, is, is the driving factor, it's the main driving factor of uh, illegal poaching and exportation of pangolin products from Africa and Kenya has seen a sharp rise of up to 40% of that in just the last seven years.